Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today our artistic journey brings us to raw photo editing, a topic a lot of you have asked about. So let's do this today. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Okay, so the reason why I want to talk about raw editing is that I got myself a new camera which I will use on VidCon to show you what's going on there, which is a huge um, YouTube event, not organized by YouTube, but a lot of YouTubers will be there. I bought a D5600, which is a consumer grade camera. Um, if you wonder why I didn't buy a professional camera, there's two reasons. First of all, I don't need one at the moment, so I rather save the money for good glass, for good lenses, rather than a super expensive camera. Um, on the other hand, I wanted to have a camera that is on the level of a lot of you, so it wouldn't make sense if I have a very professional camera and then most of the people who watch my channel don't have a camera like that, so now we are on the same level. I feel better about that. Okay, cool. So another thing I want to talk about is that in the past I've said that I wouldn't use RAW for all of your photos just for special cases. And today we're going to talk about one of these special cases. So here you can see a photo of a cat that is super dark. It is photographed in RAW and there's a special reason why it is so dark because it is nighttime. It's in my kitchen. I just have a single light there and it's kind of bright but not really and you want to have a quick exposure because cats don't really have a long attention. I don't want to use any kind of extra studio light or a flash on my cat, so just the light that is there in the room. Okay, so what I'm going to do? Well, I could use a very high ISO rating to get a short exposure but that would make the photo very noisy or with RAW we have the magic power of editing it afterwards in really, really dramatic ways. And this is where RAW really has the most powerful use. As you can see up here in the top left, I have used ISO 640 and I used an exposure time of one hundredth of a second. So very short um, exposure at night with a very low ISO. And you will be amazed what we can do with this super dark picture because as you know if you go in Affinity Photo and you open a raw picture it automatically goes into the develop persona and over here on the right side we already have our well settings our levers what we can do with that you also have lens correction that in this case is automatically applied. You can see the lens here that I'm using. It's an older lens from my former camera, but that is okay. It works still perfectly fine. Okay, but the most important part here is exposure. And you will see we can crank up exposure extremely as you could never do with the JPEG in RAW. So let's watch this. Exposure and then woo, boom, we have a nice bright picture. Let's do some more editing here. Black point a little bit higher, like that looks good. And then the brightness, we can bring the brightness up a little bit and then maybe, or maybe bring the brightness down a little bit and then make the exposure higher a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Mm, yeah, that's okay. Good. A little bit of contrast, not too much. Mm, like that. Okay, and one thing about clarity is um, clarity is just to bring in a little bit more detail. Some people confuse it with sharpening the picture because the picture looks sharper with clarity. So they crank it up like this and I say, wow, now you have a super sharp picture, but that's not actually what it is used for. So um, just add a little bit of that and you can see, well, it's good enough. You have a nice sharp crisp picture. You can see the individual hairs even up here in the small details. But the best part about this is we have very little noise in the background, very smooth picture, looks very nice. Although this is photographed at night in a kind of cart, uh, dark kitchen with just one um, light in there. So I would say it's pretty cool, especially from that dark picture. So there is one use where as it raw really makes sense to get out the detail and to not have too much noise in the picture. We can add some saturation if we want to. Let's see here, a little bit maybe, a little bit of vibrance, 
and I don't think we need to do anything more. Um, I feel like the white balance is okay. It has a nice creamy beard hair, the same as the cat looks in real. So everything looks very good here. I like the kind of soft light. It's a, I mean, it's an artificial kitchen light. So it has kind of this nice warm tone to it. So that's pretty much okay. Well, there you go. A very quick edit in RAW and a special case on how to use that. Try it out at home with your own situations and see what this brings to your photography. If you can improve some pictures that have been very noisy in the past. Um, so this is a very nice trick. As you can see, I really love the detail and how bright the picture is getting. Hey, my friends, I'm still down here. Let's do a little extra because the video was so short. So let's play around with the glorious light pack that I showed you in my last video. Some quick edits from pictures I found on the internet on Unsplash. So let's go here. Rectangle tool. Boom. Let's draw this out. Set it to soft light just to show you what you can do with the pack. Um, let's see. What do we want to have here? It's maybe a little bit dark. This is kind of nice. Do we want something warmer maybe? This is too bright. That's good. Okay, perfect. Let's go with that. And then the ellipse tool, draw out an ellipse and click here on shine. And this already has a nice orange shine. We can still adapt it if we want to. Let's put this up here. So we have some glowing um, trees that are coming from the side. Let's see. Okay, that's not too bad. We can try some other lights if we want to. So let's see. We have so many different kind of this one is nice. Different kind of shades of sunlight in the pack. And I just want to show you what you can do with it, how quick it is to use, give you some extra examples. Mm, that's also nice. That's a bit too glowy. Maybe let's use this one. And then I want to do here one last thing. Let's go in here and go to selective color. And I'm going to set this to neutrals and then just mm, some very tiny adjustments. Yeah, just to warm it up a little bit. Good. I think, I think we're done. Boom. That's that. I think boom is my new thing. I'm sorry. I'm saying so often lately, so often. Boom. That's before and that's after. All right. Let's go on to the next picture. What do we have here? Um, okay. Again, our rectangle really quick, just so you see what you can do with that. Din, 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 din. There we go. Okay. Soft light, as you know, for the ambient light, that's a very easy way to set that. Um, do we want some bright sunlight here? Maybe, you know what? I think I make this rather blue in this case. And then what I'm going to do ellipse, let's click here on glow. So it's a soft glow and I will drag this out over all of the pictures like this. And then I will set this to soft light too. So these two mix with each other. And now you can see we have nice, sunny daylight mixed from a nice blue and a nice orange. And um, maybe we can even move this a little bit over to the side. Good. And now we make a second ellipse like this and click here again on this one. And again, nice sunlight coming from the side. You see when you zoom out that this is like too hard from the blending. It's not soft enough. You get this kind of yellow outline here. It's not good. So let's click on the glow setting, which has more blur. If you need even more blur, you can just set that up here in the layer effects. Gaussian blur, just go in here, type in a higher setting as a number. No problem at all. So let's zoom in. So we see what we're doing. Bring this up here in the sky and then um, sun glow. What kind of color do we want to have? Some pink? No, it's not good. Mm. Strong orange, that's too much. What about this orange? That's also too much. This is too bright. Ah, I like this one. Okay, so this is why 
I make so many different variations of these gradients. So we really have the choice to choose what we want between all of these kind of nice gradients. And I want to have this kind of nice glow down here. Actually, let's try to make this even bigger and then put it to the side. Nah, that's not too good. Okay, let's keep it here. Okay, good. So push it up a little bit. Good. Let's group this again so you can see the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go on to the next picture. Again, like I said, just very quick edits to show you what to do with these packs. Um, here we have a dark picture, it's very nice with the light from behind. I want this to be more extreme, more like mythical. So, and also in this case, I, I'm not going to use the ambient sheets because they are just one color, uh, which is nice as ambient light for the whole situation. But in this case, I want to have a soft gradient um, going on in the background. So let's open up here again our rectangle. As always, set it to soft light like this. And then we go over to our gradients, mythical gradient pack. As you know, I will also link that in the video description so you can find that. And we can click around here to see what kind of, whoa, this is nice. She has some kind of light here on the hand. As you can see, there is some light coming here. So this might be a problem. Um, that one is nice too. That one is good. It's too bright. Now the green is not the perfect for this. Let's see. Let's try it with this one and then we can still change it afterwards. Um, ellipse again, put it here in the middle. This time I set it to shine because I want to have a pretty hard light. Oh, that's already good. We basically can use it like that. Mm. It's a good mix with the violet. It covers mostly that part with the hand, not completely. So let's go over to our sun glow. No, our let's try the neon pop uh, settings. That's a bit too extreme. That's too close. That is not bad. Okay. That is also not bad. Oh, okay. I like that one. It's a little bit like a movie poster. Um, let's see here with the gradients from the mythical gradient pack. If we maybe change the background, I think we chose this one. Yes. Okay. So maybe make it rather bluish in the background. Mm, that might be too much. Although it's a nice contrast. It has this orange teal kind of look. Is this the way to go? Maybe. Oh, should we leave it like that? There's a darker version. This is always almost like a Star Wars kind of thing. I like it. Let's leave it like that. Okay. Let's see what we have as the last picture. Um, okay. She's kind of praying to something or hoping for something so we can bring in a story here. Um, again, let's use a gradient instead of just an ambient sheet. So this is the gradient that I lose, uh, used last on the other picture or like chosen from the, huh? As you've seen before. So let's set this to soft light. It's already pretty good, but we can try. Let's try different versions here. Mm, that might be good. That's also not, not bad. Mm, I kind of. I think the one at the beginning wasn't too bad, but I want it to be a little bit dreamy. This is a bit dreamy. Um, let's try this one. Okay. Okay. Again, we make an ellipse and I want to put the light behind her. So it's coming from behind. Uh, set it up like this. Back here. So we set up like a little story where she's like praying for some wish or something. And then the light comes from behind and kind of fulfills her wish or something like that. The voice um, of whoever she's praying to. Okay, 
let's click through these different lights that's a bit too bright I find like that's a bit too orange um, this is nice again what about the cooler lights they are not good here whoops no I want to have a warm light hmm. I feel like this one is the more like it has kind of personality by the way when you see here some bending as I said in the other video uh, just go here to document ICC format and switch to 16 bit for the RGB and then the bending is gone it will be converted back to 8 bit when you export it but the bending should be a lot softer or gone at all it will be converted into a little bit of noise um, but it's still looking very good so yeah and yeah okay uh let's check real quick with these gradients here um oh this is actually better contrast i think it's a bit too extreme maybe let's see what else we have here that doesn't hmm that's also not bad this is too much orange and teal well ah, let's stay with this one after all it's pretty cool let's put the uh, light a little bit softer maybe okay so let's put this into a group so we can turn it off and on and you can see this is the before this is the after as you can see you can do in seconds really cool things prototyping getting out your creativity coming up with ideas and see where you want to go from there so these have been super quick edits just to show you some kind of things you can do uh let's go through them again real quick so this is the before this is the after this is the before and this is the after and this is the before and this is the after thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video these quick edits just to show you what to do with that i will link the glorious light pack and the mythical gradients pack in the information and the sticky comment thank you very much like and share the videos this will help my channel tremendously i thank you for watching my videos and see you in the next video i hope i could inspire you today have a nice day bye